Let's introduce a new data structure called a dictionary. So lists are also data structures. Recall that a data structure is a way of organizing things in memory such that it has certain advantages and disadvantages. Right? The way dictionaries work is that they consist of key value pairs. When we were dealing with lists, we found that in order to get one of the elements of the list, which you could think of as being values, right? In order to get one of those elements, we had to know the index of the element. So the first element was at index zero, the second element was at index one, and so forth. With dictionaries, the keys are the way that you find the values within the dictionary. So we won't have indices in the traditional sense, but you can sort of think of them as being indices, except we're not limited to numbers. We can use a variety of things as keys. We can use integers or floats, but we also can use strings. We could use something called a tuple, which is similar to a list, except that it's immutable. But we cannot use a list itself as a key. And the reason why is because whatever keys you choose have to be both unique and immutable. And since we can change lists, they're not considered immutable. So how would we create a dictionary? Well, we use a set of curly brackets. So we saw that when creating a list, we use square brackets. Now we use curly brackets. And we'll have a set of key value pairs within the uh, dictionary, or multiple key values pairs, typically. So here I have the dictionary name. Here's my opening curly bracket, my closing curly bracket. And each thing you see on the line here is a comma separated list of key value pairs. So Joseph is a key with the corresponding value 123 Main Street. Pam is a key with the corresponding value of 456 Elm Drive. Now to get a particular value, we write the name of the dictionary, square brackets, so it's similar to the way we would access something in a list, and then provide the key. So address is Joseph, gives us 123 Main Street. Now this may seem kind of strange at first if you're seeing it for the first time, but let's think about how things are stored and think about variable names and related issues. So if I do this, I say A equals five, then there's some spot in memory that I'm gonna to refer to as A, but it really has a memory address, but I typically don't know what that is, and its value is five. If I said D equals square bracket one comma two comma three, right? Then I can think there's multiple spots in memory. And this has a value of one, this has a value of two, this has a value of three. But the name that I use to refer to this spot in memory with one is D sub zero. The name I use to refer to the spot that has two is D sub one. And then finally, D sub two is the name I use to refer to this. Because if I said print D sub two, it's gonna print three, right? Well, our dictionary works the same way. Let's call this X. And we don't have to write them as rows, but I do that to make it easier to see. And if we want, I could have a number as a key and a string as the corresponding value. So now I have spots in memory they're not necessarily right next to each other, but this one I refer to using the key cat, and its value is one, two, three, four. And there's some other spot in memory that I referred to as 75, and its value is the string dog, or at least the beginning of where that's at in memory. All right? So it's really the same thing in many ways. If I say print A, I get five. If I say print D sub zero, I get one. If I say print X sub cat, in fact, technically, sorry, this really should be this. X sub cat gives me one, two, three, four. X 75 gives me dog. So I've mentioned lists quite a few times because we've already seen them and there are some similarities. So here I create a dictionary called employees with two key value pairs. So Susan is a value, Ralph is a value, and then I create a list with the elements, Susan and Ralph. So if I say print employees, one, two, three, four, it will print Susan. 
If I say print people zero, it prints Susan. So if we use them in similar fashions, at least for the example we're seeing here, there's gonna be other differences, but at least for this limited example, in this case, they give me back the same value each time. Why do we even care about dictionaries? Speed is the primary reason. Typically, we don't know the indices of list elements. So if I said, you know, print uh, people zero, of course, I'm using zero, I get Susan. But if I were to ask the question, is Susan even in the list? Well, behind the scenes, ultimately, you're gonna have to look in some sense. There's ways to minimize the look, and Python has operators and functions that will do the looking for you, but ch doesn't change the fact that Susan's not always gonna be at position zero. So I don't necessarily know where Susan will be if it's even there. But in terms of how dictionaries work, I'm not gonna get into a lot of details, but basically they use something called a hash table. And so you have a hash function and given a key to the hash function, it spits out a number and ultimately that number can be used to look at a particular index into uh, a data structure. So Susan might be at position four, might be at position 82 or whatever, but that lookup allows us to find Susan very quickly. And so that's one reason why dictionaries in certain situations are preferred over lists. They each have advantages and disadvantages, so it doesn't mean you would never use a list, but when you care about lookups and you know what the keys are going to be, well then dictionaries might be preferred. This is also why keys have to be unique. Now it is possible to have two keys ultimately tell you that something's at the same position then you have to deal with that. But that's an issue for another course. So here's an example where I'm storing student numbers and the corresponding names, and so these are workers. So I start with these two key value pairs, and notice that our for loop, since it iterates through a list of objects, can iterate, excuse me, through my list of workers. So on each iteration of the loop, student will be one of the keys. And so now if I say print workers student, one time it's gonna print workers 12, which would give me Karen, and one time print workers 34, which give me none. And so I can also get workers 34 directly doing something like this. And I can reassign the value. So now if I say workers 34 equals knee, I've just replaced num with knee. And so if I say print workers 34 here, it now prints knee. And I can add new key value pairs by just doing a straight assignment. Remember that with a list, I had to append to the end of the list. Here it's just going to add the key 78 with the corresponding value ajoy somewhere in the dictionary. And then I can print the final dictionary. So on the next slide, let's see what the actual results are. So here's where it printed the values, Karen and Nung, work in the office. They correspond to this loop here. Then remember here, I'm gonna print workers 34, replace workers 34, and now print the new value. That's just right here. Then Nung was replaced by knee. And as we saw, Sorry. I added a new key value pair right here for Ajoy. And they gave me this right here. And then the final dictionary is this. 12 with Karen is the value still is there. I replaced the value for key 34 from being numb to now knee. And I added the key value pair 78 Ajoy to the dictionary. Just like with lists, there's lots of methods associated with dictionaries and there's functions we can apply to dictionaries. So writing length in the name of the dictionary gives me the number of key value pairs that are there. If I want to remove a key value pair, I can delete the key, which will also get rid of the value. If I want to check if something is in the list, I can say, if I'm looking for X, X in D will return true if it's there or false if it's not. And I actually can use the same syntax with a list. So if D was a list, I can check to see if X was in it and also we get either true or false. Sometimes I want to know what the key value pairs are, so I can write D.items with the empty uh, parentheses here. This is a method. Sometimes I want just the keys, I can get that. Sometimes I want just the values, I can get that. And so these are 
a list of some of the possibilities for how you work with dictionaries. So let's look at some of these things now. And remember we have types like before, so to sort of revisit what we said before, if I had this, A is equal to one, two, three, and B is equal to cat, let's say print type A and B. I get an int and a string. If I did this, D is equal to square brackets. I'm creating a list here. Let's say I have one, two, three, and cat. And now D sub zero and D sub one. They're still ints and strings. It's just my name, like I showed you earlier, my name for this spot, my name for this spot, or this value. And finally, create a dictionary. And let's say I use uh, 25, sorry, this should be here. Thirty-five and print X, and now I want twenty-five. Thirty-five. There's still an int and a string, so this just becomes the name for that value. All right, so let's put them to use. Let's say I create this initial dictionary. Well, let me show you something else before we do this. So I only have one key value pair to keep it simple. But remember, if I say, what's the type of dcat? It's this list. So because my name for referencing this list, just like if I said d equals this list. So if I want the first element of this list, and if d was the name of the list, not in a dictionary, but just list itself, I'd use d sub zero, right? Well, now to get this, I'm gonna do, use dcat to get the list, and then add the subscript or the index to get that particular element. So as I print D cat, it's that list. And now if I want the first element of that list, or say the last element of that list, I can do this. There's the ones the first. Three is the last. So these just become my names for those spots in memory. So I can do other things. I can append or whatever. So that's what we're going to do now. I don't have to line this up. I just do it to make it easier to see. So it's gonna create a loop, right? Where I'm gonna generate the integers from one to nine. And I'm gonna ask a question. If I mod two is equal to one, which means I'm asking, is it an odd integer? Then we'll do this. Else. I'm going to do this. Let's say print D um, odd. And 
There we go. I just stored the numbers in each of those. So once I know the list name, which is d-odd or d-even, then I can just append to it like I would before. And I still can do this for k in d. this so k is the key that's what's given me here and now d sub k should give me the corresponding value we'll let this little print statement in there make it a little more easy to read So D even, and I could add quotes if I wanted to, to make it look better. D even has this value, D odd has this value. So there's how I'm using the dictionary. But of course you have to know the keys, and often we will because there might be something like a a person's ID number, which would be unique to them, or if you knew their names were unique or whatever. Let me show you, since I did mention tuples earlier, what that is, because I actually didn't mention that in my list uh, video. Let's say we have this. I'm using square brackets here. Now I'm going to use parentheses. So that's a list, that's a tuple. So I can do this, print a zero, print b zero. So I get the one, I get the four. a zero now equals 99. Let's print all of a again. So now I put 99 in the first spot. But now we're into a problem. B sub zero equals 123. Tuple objects does not support item assignment. Tuples are immutable. I cannot change their values. Okay. And so there's lots of functions that actually, if you're returning multiple things, you get a tuple containing the elements. So I can't do that. Which is why then I can do something like this. Now I'm just going to print the keys. So cat and four five. If I change it to this, remember lists are immutable, which means it's illegal. Unhashable type list. So I can't do that. So if you want something that seems to look like a list, and you're using it in the sense that I'm sort of packing things together. Maybe I have something like this. Uh, John Smith 78. So that maybe becomes his unique identifier. I can do that as long as I don't want to change John's name or Smith or 78. So I still can use something that sort of looks like that. All right? And it is possible to create new tuples, but then you're also creating a new key, so it's not the same thing. So that's the basics of dictionaries.